people often ask me, what are the advantages of VCA faders as opposed to linking or group channels? Let's take a look at some of the benefits of different options. Often when doing a mix, we may want to move a collective number of channels together with a single motion. So if I wanted to take all of my drum tracks and move one fader and have them all go up and down in volume, maintaining their proportional volumes. So we could do this easily using linking. So if I wanted to select my first channel and then hold down the shift key, select the last channel in my mixer, I could select all my channels and I could hit alt or option plus shift. And we can see that this will engage temporary linking. I could also turn on the quick link button and adjust the relative volumes of all the selected channels in that link. To temporarily override one, just hold down the Alt key, and now we could override that easily. There's also a secondary type of link. As opposed to the quick link, we have a more permanently defined link group. And here, we could actually name our link group. We'll call drums. And I could choose exactly which portions of the channel, such as volume, which will be linked. And I could choose not to have panning, EQ, but also to have sends linked. So you can pick and choose different components that will be linked together. And that will be more of a defined link group. Now the problem with linking, if you already have existing automation, when I activate my quick link here, where I have volume automation going up and down, now when I do this, it's gonna overwrite the fader value and then as soon as I let go, it's gonna go right back to where it was. It takes into no account the existing automation information. So if you're starting off a project, the quick links can work really well, but if you have existing automation, managing that with a link can often be problematic. Now one thing that people will do is actually kind of sum the audio output of all the channels into a group channel. So I'm gonna select all my channels here, right click and we're going to add a group channel track to the selected channels and we'll call this drums and now this fader will adjust the volume levels of all of the different drum channels so all these are now being summed into this channel where I could apply processing such as EQ or even go to my channel strip, add compression, as well as envelope shaping directly here. Now the issue with summing through the group channel is it could affect the gain structure of the audio going to the effect sense and this could be very critical during the mixing stage. So if I drop the volume here, it's gonna drop the volume that's being fed into the effect sense. So something to be aware of. So this is where VCA faders can come in handy. So I could actually select my different channels here. Again, just, and right click, and we'll add a VCA fader to the selected channels. So now if we have existing automation and certain tracks are going up and certain tracks are going down in contrary motion, as I move my VCA fader, we could actually see that even while moving down, the tracks that were going up will just kind of be trimmed in essence. Or as I go up, the tracks that were going down will just go down a little bit less. So it's taking into account the existing automation. Now where it gets really interesting is when we automate our VCA fader. So let's go ahead and open up an automation lane on a particular drum here. So you can see the existing automation. I now write in with my VCA fader and automate the changes there. So we see the second line appearing. So again, the existing automation will remain intact. So we can see the original automation plus the automation that's been applied through the VCA. Now if we wanted to coalesce those two automations, 
we could now just click on the little arrow and choose to combine the automation. And that's the result of going through the VCA fader. Now, once again, the VCA fader does not sum the audio, so you're not going to be able to apply EQ, but it does maintain the gain structure throughout the mixer, including stuff like for your auxiliary sends. Now, another handy use of VCA faders would be to take multiple channels here, and let's say I wanted to create a nested VCA. I could take my kick drums, let's add a VCA fader to the selected channels, and so now this is only controlling those two. I wanted to go to, let's say, my snare. Again, right click. And we'll just kind of do this a couple more times. And now what I want to do is I'll just select the VCA faders themselves. And let's add a VCA fader to the VCA fader. So now this would control everything. If I wanted to control just my room mics or just my toms or just my snares, we could do that all very easily with a tremendous amount of control. So as you can see, Sometimes linking works really well. Sometimes summing it through a group channel works well. But for critical mix situations, the VCAs will add a lot more flexibility. If you found this video helpful, please feel free to like the video and to subscribe to the YouTube channel.